And we love AMD, we love NVIDIA. We think there's room for both of these companies to do extremely well. What about the cyclical nature of this of this group? It's sort of disappeared in the face of AI excitement and what, what's going on right now. But who's exposed as we make this transition and we deal with a, a slower economy? This group used to be the, the tip of the spear when it came to weakness and demand. Yeah, so what happens is when in good times our memories get really short, but I'll take you back to 2023. And if you remember, uh, the first half of 2023 was all about cyclicality for companies like AMD, companies like um, you know NVIDIA and others. And the sector was quite, so as to say, in the dumps, if you will. So I think right now we have come off the bottom. Cyclicality remains a very real facet of this industry. Um, what tends If you're an NVIDIA stock investor, you must be extremely pleased with how it's performed so far this year. The stock is up more than 150% year to date. And the company has delivered blockbuster earnings and guidance for the current quarter, showing that there's still a lot of room for growth. This stellar performance is why NVIDIA hit a market cap of $3 trillion, even surpassing Apple's market cap at one point. However, despite many expecting it to overtake Microsoft, the stock ended up pulling back. According to one chief investment officer, NVIDIA has an overlooked catalyst that will help it surpass Microsoft, and become the world's most valuable company. But look, guys, uh, I, we are not worried whatsoever about uh, the future of semis, at least in the near and the midterm. Um, guys, as you know very well, the reality is that there's a 90% correlation between the macro economy and the semiconductor industry. And as you recall, all talks of recession are now off. The only talks we hear about are rate cuts and basically the pace of the recovery, whether it's going to be exceptional or moderate. Uh, but but talks of recession are off, and in those environments, semis have done very well. So that's at the broader level. When you get down to the end markets itself, all the end markets have depleted all excess inventory, and they are all rising. And it's probably most evident in commodity stocks like Micron. When you take a look at the stock like Micron that, and the run that it's had, it's indicative of the environment. Uh, that the semis are in. So we are very bullish on semis as we get into the elections, into the back half, perhaps for the second half of the year. And so I think yesterday's move, coming back to your question, was just regards to NASDAQ selling off and probably some software stocks catching a bid, but the fundamentals for semis remain. In today's video, we're going to explore this expert's opinion and discuss why NVIDIA shouldn't be worried about competition from cloud giants like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. But before we do that, if you want to keep up with NVIDIA's latest updates, make sure to stay tuned. I think is as interesting in NVIDIA and Semic productors in general is that now we're seeing pricing go up too, and it's not pricing going up, just because uh, you know they're there taking price and 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 raising price indiscriminately, it's because you know at the end of 312. Moore's Law, if you want more performance you have to pay for it and uh, AI is driving a lot of prod productivity in the economy and this next generation of NVIDIA chips is as much more productive. And in the tagline, what what Jensen Wong says is, you know, the more, the more you buy, the more you save. So what's happening is, and, and you know, the answer to that question over time is, is, is difficult to quantify, but to the extent to which AI drives productivity in, in society, NVIDIA is going to take the largest percentage of that because 344, they're the ones enabling it. NVIDIA's expected free cash flow over the next two years highlights the immense potential of the AI chip. Maker according to Yuri Kirian, Chief Investment Officer at Tamer ETF's free cash flow, is the cash A. Cars. Yeah, so we had a chance to spend some time with AMD, and what we what we heard was very interesting. Um, at the time that we made it our top pick, AMD was about 10 P points cheaper than NVIDIA was. Uh, and now that itself is not a great reason for making it at the top pick, but what was happening is they're the only real competitor to NVIDIA. Uh, they were massively supply constrained in the first half, and those supply constraints will get materially better into the back half of the year. So we're expecting a pretty nice acceleration, expecting a pretty nice acceleration. They've got a hundred some odd customers, so they've got some breadth as far as the customers go for the MI300 chip. And the traditional server business is also starting to look up. It'll do about, the market will do about 10% better. These guys will take another 5 6% share more. That said, NVIDIA and semiconductor producers are seeing an increase in pricing, but it's not due to indiscriminate price hikes. At the end of Moore's Law, 
achieving higher performance requires more investment. AI is driving significant productivity in the economy, and NVIDIA's next generation of chips is notably more efficient. As Jensen Huang, NVIDIA's CEO, puts it, the more you buy, the more you save. AI's impact on societal productivity is hard to quantify, but NVIDIA stands to benefit the most since they are at the forefront of this technology. NVIDIA's projected free cash flow over the next two years underscores the immense potential of the AI chipmaker. According to Yuri Kirian, Chief Investment Officer at Tamer ETFs, free cash flow is the money a company generates from its operations after accounting for capital expenditures. This cash can be used to distribute to shareholders, pay off debt, or reinvest in the business, all of which help boost the share price. Kirian told CNBC in a recent interview that what really amazed him was NVIDIA's forecasted cash flow for 2026, which is expected to surpass Microsoft's. Wall Street analysts project NVIDIA's free cash flow to rise to $78.7 billion in 2025 and $91.1 billion in 2026, driven by the surging demand for NVIDIA's AI chips. Software companies increasingly rely on these powerful processors to build and develop their AI models. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang noted that customers are eager to deploy NVIDIA's GPUs immediately to start making and saving money. He mentioned that demand for the company's flagship H100 grew throughout Q1, following the announcement of the upcoming Blackwell platform. This indicates that NVIDIA will not face a demand problem anytime. Uh, I, I, I don't know about destroyed. You have to remember a lot of the, the CapEx that's going on right now is not necessarily all incremental. Like you can go look at sort of spending on traditional data centers, CPUs and, and traditional servers, networking. They're, they're all in the toilet right now, right? I mean, so there's been a pivoting of spend for more traditional things to GPUs. Um, some of this GPU capacity as well is fungible. Like these, these cloud vendors can use it for their existing needs as well. Not all of it is generative AI. Some of it is things like recommendation engines from, from players like Meta, like other like more traditional, more legacy types of machine learning where there's already a clear return on, on, on that. All right. um, and you can sort of run through the math. Like if, if the returns take a little longer, I, I mean, it doesn't impact their margins all that much. It, it's a, a, a colleague of mine who covers Microsoft, he did some of this work. It's a few hundred basis points. I well, I mean, they are and they aren't, right? So I, I, I understand the need for a second source, um, and, and they are the clear second source, at least on GPUs. At the same time, you can also see where the dollars are going. So AMD has suggested that they'll sell $4 billion plus in AI revenues uh, this year. I, I think most investors think they'll do five or six. I don't want to take too much away from them. It was zero a year ago, so even zero to four over a year is, is, is good. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, NVIDIA might do $100 billion in data center revenues this year. It's clear where the dollars are flowing, right? That in, in, they're not flowing to AMD like in the grand scheme of like everything that's getting spent right now. Giants such as Microsoft, Amazon, and Google are propelling the share prices of NVIDIA and other semiconductor companies to new heights. This led Yuri Kirian to say that NVIDIA is setting the pace in the industry with annual product announcements that competitors struggle to keep up with highlighting the company's strong fundamentals. Despite this, Kirian and some investors suggest that the revenue potential from AI software among NVIDIA's customers is uncertain, which might cap the AI stock's future growth. This concern arises because many of NVIDIA's customers are now developing their own AI chips, reducing their reliance on NVIDIA. However, Anthony Ginsberg, chief executive of Gins Global, the firm behind the tech Megatrend ETF, dismissed these concerns. He pointed out that AI is accelerating the adoption rates of cloud services, with a significant portion of IT spending in America being cloud-centric. Ginsburg emphasized that any CEO without an AI mission is at a disadvantage. He predicts that Fortune 500 companies will increasingly outsource their AI and algorithmic business to cloud service providers, benefiting companies like Google Cloud and Microsoft Cloud. This, in turn, will also benefit NVIDIA as these companies are NVIDIA's customers. Analysts at DA Davidson estimated that Microsoft spent $4 billion on NVIDIA's AI chips, indicating the significant investment major tech companies are making in NVIDIA's technology. This strong demand from tech giants underscores NVIDIA's pivotal role in the ongoing AI and cloud service revolution. Several of NVIDIA's biggest customers, including major cloud service providers, are developing their own AI chips. Despite this potential threat, NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang remains unconcerned. 
In fact, a Microsoft executive revealed to Business Insider that the company spent around $5 billion on NVIDIA chips last year, confirming the significant investment. If you're wondering why Huang is so confident, stay tuned as we'll delve into his reasons shortly. But first, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to create, so if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support means a lot. All right, let's check in on a few of the top analyst calls from today. NVIDIA shares higher on the back of two price target boosts. UBS raising its outlook from 120 to 150, citing demand momentum for the Blackwell chips, while Wolf Research also raising its price target to 150, calling it one of the best ideas in semis. So UBS, for its part, Talks truly about demand momentum for Blackwell rack scale systems, says it's robust. Sentiment, yes, they say it's. When asked about competitors, Jensen Huang quickly highlighted three key ways NVIDIA differentiates itself. First, NVIDIA sets itself apart from large cloud service providers through the richness of its accelerated computing architecture. Customers can use this architecture for all their AI needs, including training models and inference. Huang noted that AI inference has fundamentally changed, with large language models now generating images instead of just pattern recognition. NVIDIA has adapted seamlessly to this shift, providing a viable alternative to the increasing computing costs and energy usage associated with general-purpose computing. NVIDIA's accelerated computing platform offers data center customers the lowest total cost of ownership. Second, Huang emphasized that NVIDIA's technology is virtually everywhere. Another way the company stands out. Unlike AI chips developed by Amazon, which are limited to AWS, NVIDIA's chips are used across all cloud platforms. This universal presence is especially advantageous for companies utilizing multiple clouds. Additionally, NVIDIA excels beyond the cloud, supplying chips for on-premises servers as well, giving it an edge over Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Finally, Huang pointed out that NVIDIA is unique because it builds AI factories, providing comprehensive solutions that integrate its hardware and software capabilities. When discussing competitors, Jensen Huang highlighted three key ways NVIDIA differentiates itself. First, NVIDIA sets itself apart from large cloud service providers through the richness of its accelerated computing architecture. Customers can use this architecture for all their AI needs, including training models and inference. Huang noted that AI inference has fundamentally changed, with large language models now generating images instead of just recognizing patterns. NVIDIA has adapted seamlessly to this shift, providing a viable alternative to the increasing computing costs and energy usage associated with general-purpose computing. NVIDIA's accelerated customers the lowest total cost of ownership. Second, Huang emphasized that NVIDIA's technology is virtually ubiquitous, another significant differentiator. Unlike AI chips developed by Amazon, which are limited to AWS, NVIDIA's chips are used across all cloud platforms. This universal presence is especially advantageous for companies utilizing multiple clouds. NVIDIA excels not only in cloud computing but also in providing chips for on-premises servers, giving it an edge over Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Third, Huang introduced the concept of AI factories, a new type of data center that uses accelerated computing to build AI applications. These factories encompass the entire system for training and running AI apps. NVIDIA's CFO, Colette Kress, mentioned in the Q1 call that the company worked with more than 100 customers in computing platform, offers data